In this presentation, we will see about security attacks. We will start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to Outcome number 1, we will understand various passive attacks. Outcome number 2, we will understand various active attacks. And outcome number 3, we will know the differences between passive and active attacks. Before we step into passive and active attacks, we will revisit the OSI security architecture. The OSI security architecture has three key components. Number 1, the security attack. Number 2, the security mechanism. And number 3, security service. In today's lecture, we are going to focus on security attack. Let's dive into what is security attack. We know attack is an action that compromises the security of an individual or an organization. And if the attack is successfully launched, then the effects of the attacks would be loss of data or corruption of data or ransomware attacks or injection of viruses, worms or malicious softwares into the network or defacing the servers and many effects are possible. The attacker only knows for what he has launched the attack. And this attack is basically of two types. Number one, passive attack and number two, active attack. Firstly, we will see about passive attack. Passive attack attempts to learn or make use of information from the system. Basically, passive attacks are unauthorized reading of messages and no modification of messages involved. Suppose if there is a sender and a receiver. If sender is sending some data to the receiver and the attacker's intention will be just observing or reading what message the sender is sending to the receiver. And that's why I quoted passive attacks are unauthorized reading of messages and this attack is mainly to learn or make use of the information from the system. And basically these passive attacks does not affect system resources because the intention of this attack is just seeing the message content. Obviously, this attack will not affect system resources. As mentioned, the main motive of the attacker is just to observe or eavesdrop the conversation. And this point says that this attack is mainly eavesdropping or monitoring of transmissions. Whatever the sender and the receiver are transmitting, the attacker's intention will be either eavesdropping the messages or monitoring what kind of transmission is taking place. So, the goal of the passive attacker is to obtain information that is being transmitted. Let's see the two types of passive attack. Number one is release of message content and number two traffic analysis. So, before seeing the examples, we must understand one thing that in passive attack, it's just unauthorized reading or monitoring the messages. Let's assume there is a confidential telephonic conversation or a confidential email is being transmitted. This attacker's intention is just to know what is being transmitted. We will see the first example, the release of message content. In cryptography, we have two important characters that I would like to introduce. One is Alice and the other one is Bob. We consider Alice and Bob are the legitimate guys. In this example, we consider this dirt to be an attacker. Now, what is this release of message content? Say Bob is sending some message to Alice. So somehow Bob and Alice are connected to each other. It may be through the internet or any other communication facility. Whatever message Bob is sending to Alice, Darth is getting a copy of the message. He is reading the contents of the message which is sent from Bob to Alice. So what Darth is going to do is, Darth is going to understand or know what is the data that is being transmitted between the sender and the receiver. In this case, Bob is the sender and Alice is the receiver. If Bob and Alice are exchanging information, if Darth is able to see the conversation, how to restrict this or how to prevent this? If Bob is encrypting the data before sending the data as such and Alice alone can decrypt, then Darth will have no way to see what message is being transmitted. But if the messages are not encrypted, obviously Darth will be able to know what is the data that is being communicated between the sender and the receiver. So we are done with the release of message content. Let's now move on to traffic analysis. In the traffic analysis, we have the same example where we have Bob to be the sender and we have Alice to be the receiver. And we have Darth who is the attacker here. Let's assume Bob has realized that somebody may sniff the conversation or somebody may eavesdrop the conversation. What Bob and Alice have decided? They have decided to do encryption before transmitting the data. Let's assume in this example, Bob is sending some encrypted data to Alice. Only Bob and Alice can understand what data is being transmitted because the data is now encrypted. The message is now encrypted. 
If Darth receives this encrypted message, he will be definitely not be able to understand what is the data. But still, few information can be extracted, like the location or the identity of the communicating host or the length of the message that is being transmitted between Bob and Alice, the frequency of message transfers between Bob and Alice. This information will be useful in guessing the nature of the communication that is taking place between Bob and Alice. So Darth will come to know about some information or Darth can guess what is the data that is being transmitted or what kind of data that is being transmitted based on the traffic. So in traffic analysis, Darth is going to observe the pattern of messages from Bob to Alice. We are done with passive attack. Let's now move on to active attack. We know in passive attack, there is no modification of messages involved, just reading the messages. Whereas in active attack, the active attack involves some modification of data streams or the creation of false data stream. Just recollect, in passive attack, there is no modification of messages, only reading of messages, right? So the attacker will be reading either the message or the nature of message that is being transmitted if it is encrypted. Whereas in active attack, this active attack involves modification of the data streams or creation or insertion of a new data stream or a false data stream into the network. So active attacks involve some modification of the message or the data stream. Basically, this active attack is subdivided into four categories. Number one, masquerade. Number two, replay. Number three, modification of messages. And number four, denial of service. Let's start with the first active attack, the masquerade. What is this masquerade? In masquerade, one entity pretends to be a different entity. Suppose, if I steal someone's username and password and if I log in with that username and password, I am a masquerader because I am not using my own credentials to log into the system. Rather, I am using someone's credential by just stealing that information. What the system will think if I provide the username and password of somebody else? The system will think that that person only is using the username and password because there is no way for the system to ensure that who is using. It verifies the credentials and provides the access. This is exactly masquerading is. Previously, Bob only was actually communicating with Alice. So in this example, Bob is not sending any data transfer to Alice. Rather, Darth is sending some data to Alice. What is the attack here then? Darth pretends to be Bob. So the message is what Darth is sending, you know, this the message from Darth appears to be from Bob. When Alice receives the message, Alice thinks that the message is from Bob. But actually, it is from Darth and Darth sends the message like Bob. This is exactly masquerading is. Then what we can achieve from this masquerading? Say in this example, there is an authorized entity. Let's take Bob as the authorized entity and let's assume that Bob is having few privileges only. But Darth, when he pretends like Bob, he may request some more privileges from Alice. So one example of this attack is an authorized entity with few privileges may demand for extra privileges. We are done with masquerading, the first active attack. Let's now navigate to the second active attack, the replay attack. In replay attack, the name itself says that there is going to be a replay activity. So the messages are subsequently retransmitted. So in this example, can you see Bob is sending some message to Alice and here Darth is the attacker. What Darth is going to do? Darth is going to capture message from Bob to Alice and later replay the message to Alice. Say for example, Bob is sending some data items to Alice and Darth is going to collect all the messages which is sent by Bob to Alice and later Darth is going to replay or send the same messages subsequently again and again in order to provide an unauthorized effect so that Alice will be confused and provoked. This is replay attack. We are done with the second type of active attack, the replay attack. Let's now move on to the third type, which is the modification of messages. So the name itself says that the messages are going to be modified. Let's see an example. In this example, Bob is going to send some data to Alice. So Bob is going to send some data, but Darth captures the message. Later, Darth, after capturing the message, he is going to modify the message and send that message to Alice. Now Alice receives the modified message, not the original message that was created by Bob. So the attacker Darth here modifies the message from Bob to Alice. Say for example, if Alice is sending a text, allow John to edit the document, what Darth can do? He can capture the message, he can modify the original message. The original message is allow John to edit the document. But what Darth is going to do? He is going to modify the message. Let's assume instead of John, he is placing the word Tim. So now what Darth is going to send to Alice? 
allow tim to edit the document actually bob created the text allow john to edit the document what alice is receiving allow tim to edit the document so this is also an attack this attack we will call as modification of messages we are done with the third type of attack which is the modification of messages let's now move on to the fourth type the last type the denial of service attack the name itself says that we are going to be denied from getting the service let's see an example in this example bob wants to access the server but what darth is going to do darth is going to do some activity or action on the server such that bob is getting denied from accessing or getting the service bob actually in a need of getting service from the server but what darth is doing darth is overloading the server or darth is putting a lot of stress on the server in such a way that the performance of the server is degraded and the server is no more able to service new clients so when darth wants to access the server the server is already overloaded and the server cannot consider the request of bob so bob will not be getting service from the server now bob is getting denied from getting the service this is denial of service attack see basically there are multiple denial of service attacks in computer network lecture series i told you before any communication takes place in tcp the connection establishment phase will be the first phase right so before data transfer that can take place connection establishment the three way handshaking will be performed What if Darth is creating a malicious program or a bot program in his system and a lot of TCP connections are established with the server I already told you attackers are intelligent guys so how Darth is going to create this malicious program you know he is going to create a program in such a way that from his computer a lot of TCP connection request is going to reach server but the server will be thinking that it is from different computers In real time we have a lot of tools to launch denial of service attacks but never try denial of service attacks without the knowledge of the owners according to the server server thinks that it is from different clients so at one fine point of time the server becomes overloaded with a lot of requests so obviously bob will not be able to access the server right this is denial of service attack there are multiple denial of service attacks in this example we have seen the tcp connection establishment way of denial of service attack There are multiple denial of service attack exist in today's world that's it we are done with the fourth type the denial of service attack so we are done with the active attack also before we conclude let's see the difference between active and passive attacks we know the basic difference between the passive and active attack passive attack will not involve in modification of messages whereas active attack leads to modifications of messages that is being transmitted let's start with the passive attack now generally passive attacks are hard to detect because there is no modification of the message involved if the messages are modified we can verify whether the message is modified or not but passive attacks are just reading or eavesdropping the conversation we can't guarantee that how many people have read the conversation say you want to send a letter to your friend and before the letter reaches your friend let's assume 10 people have read the message without modifying the message how can you or your friend come to know how many people have read the message so that's practically not possible right So passive attacks are generally hard to detect and neither the sender nor receiver is aware of the attack because the messages are not modified and how to prevent passive attacks if the messages are sent as a plain text then it will be difficult to prevent right but if the messages are encrypted then except the sender and receiver no one can understand what the messages are right so encryption prevents the success of the passive attacks as far as passive attack is concerned we know detecting the passive attack is very hard so what should we do we should focus more on preventing the passive attack so in passive attack more emphasis is on prevention than detection and coming to the next attack the active attack so generally active attacks are hard to prevent because we can't prevent the attacks but we can easily detect the attacks because there will be modification of messages as mentioned it is difficult to prevent so there are chances for the physical or the software or network vulnerabilities to take place This active attack may involve in the physical devices or in the software or in the data that is being transmitted or maybe in the network as well. Whenever there is an active attack, we must detect and recover from any disruption or delays. We need to immediately act upon it otherwise there could be a disaster in the organization. As and when the active attack is detected, we need to detect and recover from any disruption or delays of the service because it is more important, right? And finally, if the detection has a deterrent effect, it may also contribute to prevention. So we should focus on detecting as well as preventing the active attacks. Now I'll just put a question this way: Which attack is more dangerous? Is it passive or active? I know many people will answer active attacks are more dangerous. 
I will tell you both the attacks are dangerous because a confidential information breach or the security information breach let's assume a confidential information maintained by an organization maybe it's customers record or payroll information or any other sensitive and highly confidential information by that organization or even a government related information which is considered to be the most confidential data or military related data if it is passively attacked no modification just revealed it leads to disasters as well right so both the attacks are dangerous it's not active or passive attacks are dangerous we need to ensure that our system is not vulnerable to any attacks and that's it guys i hope now you understood various passive attacks and active attacks we also have seen the difference between passive and active attacks i hope you guys enjoyed today's lecture i'll see you in the next lecture thank you for watching